The next presenter is Sergei Patapo from NITP, TP, uh, Russia. He will speak about some of the ways to process uh, uh, data with scanner systems, scanner service systems. The mic is off. The mic is off. Mic is off. Sorry. Because space systems have some advantages. They are extraterritorial. They can capture any point on the globe and they can compete, of course, with aerial photography only when their quality is on par with that. Because there are some advantages, the broad swath and uh, they can compete if they have high referencing levels comparable to what we can get from aerial photography. That is why considering that our Congress is scientific and not purely technical, the group of authors uh, headed by Professor Chigunichev has prepared a report where we try to offer one of the methods which will allow us, we think, after we undergo experimental studies to increase the precision of author photos and their quality. I believe that we can double check it on the resource P and now I'm going to show you the main idea behind this method. It is well known that the scanner space systems, such systems as uh, resource P, have a set of matrices located on the, on the checkerboard way like shown on this slide. Here we have S X, Y, Z system, the beginning of which, which coin coincides with S, and then uh, the axis goes perpendicular, and uh, Y goes to PZS matrix, matrix, CCD matrix, and uh, and F is a focal length of the capturing system. There is a ve vector which predetermines the M point in the system of coordinates. If you know the external elements of orientation of the scanner, then our vector can show you the correct vector to M point, and we can acquire the correct coordinates of the location. You can get it while moving the satellite, and uh, you do it by filling it with the uh, light energy coming from the same uh, uh, location consequently and uh, consistently. You can see how it works on the upper right angle of the drawing where each scanner gets it from its own matrix. The matrices are related in the focal uh, plane with some overlap. This overlap is used to unite uh, neighboring scans into a single stitched image. At the stage of uh, uh, assembly of matrices, we look at the shift sizes and uh, we use algorithms of getting uh, one single image uh, based on the overlaps of scans and polynomes of different values and so on, which allow us to shift, expand, and uh, do other things One of one scan vis-a-vis -vis the other to make sure that the previous scan will be the continuation of the next. This approach to acquiring the image can deliver good results if we're talking about the plains or flat areas. If it is a mountainous area, of course, there will be significant shifts of same points depending on their elevation on ground. And these shifts will be different in different areas of the image. In some projects, like in Samara, for instance, and Rizan, it was suggested to use polynomes of high values. But it is quite obvious that this approach cannot deliver good results, especially with big uh, changes in altitudes. Also, when we unite scans into single image, each uh, line of which will con consist of a fragment of an image of odd and even matrices, then it will be equal to the sum of matrices that form the image of the scan. For odd and even elements 
of the matrix, these values will be different because they, these fragments will be acquired in different times. The resulting line elements will equal the average values between odd and even elements, which can lead to some errors uh, for during the subsequent photogrammetric processing. In this work, we suggest a different approach in building a single image. The main idea behind this method is as follows. For instance, each line of the scan, we know the error, and we know the digital elevation model for a particular location. Then we can do ortho transformation. Then we will be able to do ortho transformation of each scan separately viewing them as independent images and then acquire a single orthophoto map by uniting transformed or rectified images together. This approach implies the direct ortho transformation which is described in the works of uh, Professor Chugunichev and Mikhailov. And the main disadvantage of this method is the need to do iteration process of finding the points of crossing uh, rays on this, like on this image, which is established for each pixel of internal orientation and digital elevation model, which is quite a long-term process. And in the resulting image, we can have uh, empty pixels. That is why it is suggested first to calculate RPC coefficients for each scan separately, and then to do reverse transformation, which would be free of these uh, default uh, defects. And the connection can be shown in the following equation shown on this slide in the right upper corner, where x and y are the coordinates of the scan uh, image of a separate scan x, y, uh, uh, and z are the points, and p1, p2, and 4 are the polynomes, which uh, can be visualized like here on this slide. For RPC coefficients, and initially we see the real correlation between the image of the scan and the spatial position of the object. And uh, on the elements of internal orientation and coordinates of x, y of scanner image. Now, if we orient each connection of, of this race, uh, of this x and y uh, positioning, then the projecting uh, rays will go through the particular points on location, which can be calculated based on the collinearity equations, if you know z uh, elevation for those points. Where x, y, z uh, determine the direction, and uh, the big ones sh show the accuracy of the terrain. And AT is a matrix of turn at the moment of building that line. Z1, Z2, and 3 show you the points of crossing ways. So we will have a set of points with the coordinates, each of which has a corresponding dot on the scan and the number of planes with known marks can be arbitrarily identified. This way, you will be able to generate X, Y, and Z coordinates. This enormous amount of dots of images is never really calculated. Typically, you would assign a grid along the X, Y, and Z. And then you identify three points along each line. Now it's enough to build an equation, collinear equation for each pair, for respective points, and solve it using the least squared method. This way you find RPC coefficients of each scan. Uh, figure 6 shows the principle of generating orthophotos according to all scans. So based on the multitude of scans, we are going to generate the image. So setting the X and Y coordinates 
on orthophoto. We use DM to determine the Z coordinates. Then, knowing the known RPC coefficients, we determine uh, the coordinates of a respective point. This is how you work with each p pixel. If there is an overlap, then you can use the average for the pixel brightness. Together with orthophoto, uh, you can also generate an image from the central projection. For this, it's enough to have an arbitrary value for external orientation. For example, x0 equals uh, y0, and f is a constant. And the centers of uh, coordinates of the uh, quasi centers can be used as zero. So, having generated this image, you can process it in any photogrammetric system. The accuracy of orthophoto will depend largely on the accuracy on, of the plane and altitude model. There are two things here. First, you need to have very good matrix of uh, elevation, good DEM, and f fairly accurate data on board based on external orientation. If you have a stereo pair, then generating an orthophoto can be made much easier by lessening the dependency on the accuracy of DEM. This will help you increase accuracy of orthophoto plan as a result of stereo pair processing. Dense point cloud is at the, at the heart of it. Professor Chubunichev uh, made a presentation on this during the previous uh, conference. So a section of the land is represented as a voxel structure using x, y, z. Each pixel has a following side, size. Then for each voxel with uh, coordinates x, z, and y, big x, y, and z small are determined. You uh, apply the equation from the first slide, and you can determine the optical densities to determine the identification value. This is the formula. C, X, Y, Z small equals delta. Well, here it is. This is your formula. X, Y minus D to X, Y. The value of uh, identification is determined for each pair. Then the minimum value is put in the respective voxel with coordinates X, X Y, and Z big. And uh, you compare it uh, with the results of the neighboring voxels. Then you add the value. And the final adjusted value will be a sum of the values of L and are small. The result of identification will be the PES value. And the final value for x, y, and z will be the one for which value of identification is a minimum. If each voxel generated this way can be assigned uh, some level of brightness, 
then you will get a regular texturized digital surface model and orthophoto as an original projection of this model on terrain. Experimental research will be conducted soon based on the resource P images and we hope that we will receive results that we will be able to report at the next conference, which hopefully will help improve algorithms for processing of scans received from space and thereby enhance accuracy because uh, the fight for accuracy is fierce. You know that the number of satellites have uh, uh, meter accuracy, but some require that some users demand that it be even more accurate. Thank you.